This is a story about how a few curious punk rock kids from Montreal changed the media world with edgy, unapologetic content as the internet disrupted the way we consume media. Building a company to a $5.8 billion valuation and now staring bankruptcy in the face, owing creditors over a billion dollars. Starting out as a small alternative magazine from Montreal, Vice clawed its way to become a global media powerhouse that dared to venture into dangerous territory and capture original stories no one else would touch. But like the end of a mosh pit, all good things must come to an end, and Vice is now staring bankruptcy right in the face. In this video, we'll explore the history of Vice Media from its humble beginnings in 1994 to its expansions and acquisitions including the launch of Vice News and their own TV channel, Viceland. We'll also discuss their noteworthy struggles as they grappled with an inability to turn a profit and a mountain of debt. As we look towards the future, we'll dissect the challenges of making money in media in 2023 and what other digital media companies can learn from Vice's cautionary tale. Will a new media company rise from the ashes of Vice? Stick around to find out. Before I get into the rise and fall of Vice, I want to talk about their history of covering topics that no one else would touch. Vice was one of the first publishers to enter into North Korea and film the experience. At a time when most people wouldn't have dared to enter the country out of fear that they could end up like Otto Warmbier, Vice still went in and got the story, at least to the extent that North Korean officials would allow. There is also the time they went into Liberia to investigate the country's civil war and its aftermath. They interviewed General Butt Naked, a former warlord who was infamous for his brutal and sadistic acts, including cannibalism. Vice dove headfirst into the dark side of Liberia's history and the complexities of the post-conflict society. They've also been known for covering alternative cultures like the competitive world of dog grooming or the witches of Romania. And they even have a pulse on stories no one else would care to cover, like a man who surgically implanted headphones into his ears, or Alberta's love of heating $2 coins with lighters and throwing them at strippers. Vice was originally founded by Shane Smith, Sarush Alvey, and Gavin McInnes with the initial goal to provide work and a community service. It all really picked up when the Canadian wealthy software entrepreneur Richard Shalwinski acquired the magazine in 1999 as part of a magazine e-commerce roll-up company called NormalNet. Vice then moved to New York City and launched its first website. Under Shalwinski's ownership, a few retail stores were opened in New York City where customers could purchase fashion items that were advertised in the magazine. But eventually the dot-com bubble burst, which paved the way for the original founders to regain control and close the retail shops. By 2007, Vice was more than just a magazine. It had 13 foreign editions, an independent record label, and an online video channel with hundreds of thousands of views. They even started covering serious topics like the armed conflict in Iraq. Over the years, Vice continued to expand, acquiring the fashion magazine ID in 2012, launching Vice News in 2013, and even creating their own TV channel, Viceland, in 2016 under a partnership with A&E Networks. It was a refreshing change from the stodgy American-centric narratives that dominated traditional news media. From slut ever to the world's scariest drug, Vice's content had a way of grabbing attention and racking up millions of views. They weren't afraid to point the camera in a different direction, and that's what made them successful. Today, Vice Media is said to be preparing to file for bankruptcy protection. The company's inability to turn a profit seems to be at the core of their struggles but there was always an interesting list of investors. Disney saw potential in Vice back in 2016 and was ready to buy the company for a cool $3.5 billion after previously investing $400 million. Turned out that that offer just wasn't enough for old Shane Smith. Fast forward to May 2021, when Vice attempted to go public via a special purpose acquisition company, and sadly the market wasn't buying what Vice was selling. In September 2021, they managed to raise $135 million in funding from existing investors and James Murdoch's firm, but it wasn't enough to keep the wolves at bay. By June 2022, Vice announced they'd be slowing down hiring and cutting costs to generate $25 million in EBITDA. Unfortunately, they're now under the pressure from investors like private equity firm TPG to repay a whopping $1.1 billion in debt. You heard that right, folks. Somehow this media company has burned through over a billion dollars in debt. 
Let's not forget about the repeated layoffs and the closure of Vice World News. A company that once stood tall with a valuation of nearly $6 billion in 2017 is now scrambling to find its footing. And in February, the company's CEO for over five years, Nancy Dubik, resigned, leaving a memo for Vice staff saying that she will now cheer for them from the sidelines. Today, Vice is looking for a buyer as they try to provide liquidity for investors and pay back that mountain of debt. And while well, discussions with potential buyers are ongoing, no deal is assured or imminent. The Wall Street Journal reported last year that Vice has estimated it will hit $1 billion in revenue by the end of 2023. But at this point, all that matters is servicing the debt, which has turned into the 10-ton elephant in the room. Let's discuss those potential buyers. According to the New York Times, Vice has been searching for buyers since the start of the year, like a young female opportunist seeking a rich banker boyfriend on SeekingArrangement.com but with far fewer options. If bankruptcy is declared, according to the New York Times, it's likely that Fortress, the most senior debt holder, would take control and auction off Vice with equity holders expected to come up empty. Media isn't always about profit. It's often about propaganda and network effects. Just look at Canada's own Rogers Communications, who makes over 50% gross margins on their internet and telecommunications segments, while only generating 3% gross margins on their media division. Whether we're talking about Vice Media, BuzzFeed, or Protocol, it's clear that as interest rates have gone up, simply having an audience is no longer enough to raise money. Media companies now have to stand on their own feet or have a serious sugar daddy. These companies are navigating a minefield of challenges. With 75% of media organizations admitting their budgets are under heavy scrutiny, it's no wonder that the traditional advertising channels are losing out to direct-to-consumer advertising. After all, in this age of uncertainty, loyalty is king. Of course, the cookie monster is lurking around the corner, likely to blow up the media landscape as we know it, with third-party cookies doing the way of the dodo. Marketers will soon be scrambling to find new ways to target their audiences. Consolidation is on the horizon with big fish like Disney, Viacom, and Comcast swallowing smaller media companies to expand their reach and leverage economies of scale. So let's wrap it up. In a world where armchair journalism reigns supreme, Vice Media bucked the trend by actually sending reporters into the field, venturing to dangerous places, and capturing original stories firsthand. They threw caution to the wind and put boots on the ground, delivering authentic, gritty content that captivated millions. But alas, even the most daring enterprises aren't immune to the cold, hard realities of the media industry. Vice's impending bankruptcy stands as a sobering reminder that when interest rates exist above zero, it's not enough to be bold. You have to have your financial ducks in a row too. So as we say our goodbyes to the groundbreaking era of Vice, let's tip our hats to the fearlessness and tenacity. You may not have always agreed with their takes, but at least they went and got us original news, something AI can't do and never will. Because real news requires real people, real relationships, and real risk to go and get for us. They may have stumbled at the finish line, but their legacy of daring journalism and original storytelling will live on. And who's to say what the future holds? Perhaps a new media company will rise from the ashes of Vice, inspired to carry the torch of intrepid reporting and risk-taking likely carrying that same torch for Comcast, Verizon, or some other telecommunications provider, or likely a Apple, Google, Amazon, or Netflix looking to consolidate content. Until then, I don't care what side of the political aisle someone is on, it's those people going out in the field that we need more of. Hopefully Vice can find a way to live another day. Otherwise, we're gonna have to rely on Elon and his dancing robots to do our reporting. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you could do me a big favor, please hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I love you all.